All right, let's talk about the other side of the coin, the guys that didn't do so well this week. Pooped in his big boy pants. It might be done. It might be over. I don't think Peyton Manning will be started by a fantasy football player again. Do you, you got, agree or disagree? True or false? I think, Peyton, you got your record. You hold it alone. You beat Brett Favre, and it's time to hang him up. Do you think that this is going to be a bad memory for him then? Because the game started, he got the record on the first pass, and then he had probably the worst game of his career. I think it will be a bad memory for him for several weeks. <laughs> and then after that, he will have that record forever and will forget about how it came in that game because sure. how it came – came over an entire career. So it'll be a great memory in the long run, but I'm sure it has a very sour taste. And yeah, from a fantasy football perspective, Peyton Manning is done. Uh, I don't even think you're going to be able to package him and get value for him anywhere now. Oh, no. So at this point, just drop him. You know, rule 87 is that <laughs> when Peyton Manning scores negative 7.1, you can't trade him for anybody. Right. Yeah. So running backs, all right. Not a lot of guys that completely uh, poop their pants, but... There were several that did not have good games. Darren McFadden is really the headliner. He he wasn't terrible. No, he he, he didn't he by put a, a quantity goose egg. perspective. But, but seventeen for thirty two. Man, that is that is still about double the yards per carry that Joyke Bell got. Well, he, he was like fifteen for seventeen. Well, that they can't run the ball. They've decided it's going to be a season long thing. There, <laughs> they're the, just not going to be. And they won. You know what though, Darren McFadden. Don't be afraid of him going forward. Tony Romo is now going to be back. He's going to take the boxes and, and open them up. So Darren McFadden is still going to be the guy. You saw 17 carries this last game. I don't expect that to change, but I expect the defense he's running against to change. So I like him. The guy you should be really unhappy with, C.J. Anderson, you saw in that last game. Now, granted, it was a complete you know, mess for the Broncos all around, but he wasn't the guy. Ronnie Hillman was the guy. He only had two carries the whole game, and those came later after it was, like, out of touch. So Ronnie Hillman is the back you want there, I believe. And uh, then Antonio Andrews, I you have to mention him because you were starting to think, well, you know, maybe I can actually trust this guy a little bit. He had a terrible matchup against Carolina. They were at home, but 11 for 8? Come on, Antonio. Yeah, I mean, I would expect Somebody a flexed more. him out this week. For sure, but it was a bad matchup. I mean, you, yeah. you've seen a lot of decent running backs. You know, Frank Gore, who's been great this year, had a terrible game against Carolina. So, uh, Quick sidebar, one of the things that you notice, uh, the talent levels are what influence the matchup so, so much. You have a guy, even um, D Doug Martin's been a little bit of a victim to this, but when you have these tough run matchups, if you're, talent, if you're just a volume back, like Antonio Andrews really was, he wasn't like a oh, this guy's going to set the world on fire. It was, okay, he's going to get all the carries. Right. So when those guys run into matchups like that, it is trouble in fantasy football. Yeah. It is no, trouble. It's a very good point. So, all right, let's talk about the onslaught of, of wide receiver disappointment. Oh, man, there were a ton of wide receivers who Tell put everybody up, what you did in our league. Yeah, so I, despite my own words last week, so I have um, – I've, I've got what I at least thought was a great wide receiver core of Allen Robinson – and uh, Alshon Jeffrey, Randall Cobb, and Mike Evans. I needed three of those, and so originally I had sat Mike Evans, but I had said uh, to a lot of people that uh, I would I would think because of the injury to Alshon, the matchup, that you should play Mike Evans over Alshon. So I put Evans in my lineup. I was happy with it. And last minute, Sunday morning, I made the swap back. But it's all right. I'm still going to win. Go eight and two. So Lead the league. Alshon three for 23 uh, Jeffrey was maybe getting his snaps managed a little bit based on the groin injury reports. Ah, yeah. And he's got another terrible matchup this, this next week. Um, uh, still probably, you know, some lingering effects of the groin. So, I, you know, I don't see him. I, I think rest of season, he's a clear wide receiver one, but he's going to have another middling game. I expect it to be better than this next week, but you know, a, a wide receiver two next week. What's going on with Stefan Diggs? Not a whole lot, and that's the problem with being What's the number one. He he had three for 42, but he's the number one wide receiver for a team that does not air it out a whole lot. The Minnesota Vikings 
have just not done anything through the air. And that's kind of – that's why they got Teddy Bridgewater. That's why they're running with Adrian Peterson. They got a guy who's going to slow the game down, be better for a defensive team, uh, not make a lot of mistakes because he doesn't take a lot of risks. And that's just not, not good for mm. Stephen Diggs. What do you do with Diggs next week against the Packers? Uh, I think you you put him in that uh, flex consideration still because he is the number one. The Packers, you got to watch with Green Bay and see if their cornerbacks are healthy next week. That's been a big change, whether they've got a good or bad defense. Uh, so he's a flex consideration next week. Jordan Matthews, three for 21. Jeremy Macklin, three for 17. Sammy Watkins, three for 14. We'll, let's talk about those three, and then we'll get to the gooses. Yeah, the, let's get to the gaggle. We'll get to the gaggle <laughs> of terrible wide receiver play. Yeah, so uh, Jordan Matthew, Jeremy Macklin, Sammy Watkins. Some of these were matchups. I think Sammy Watkins, he had a very bad matchup. We didn't expect big things from him this week. Jordan Matthews, he had come off of a really good game. His floor looked to be higher, but you had two problems in this game. One, did you see the hit he took? Oh, it was legal, but it was I did not brutal. See it. He got smashed. I couldn't even believe he came back in the game. Uh, he was down for, for a minute or two. So there was that. And then, of course, the quarterback change. So, mm -hmm. you know, we did see Mark Sanchez when he played that Jordan Matthews was a favorite target of his. We'll have to wait and see the health of both of these guys going forward. I still think Jordan Matthews is a flex play. Jeremy Macklin just wasn't very involved, which was surprising considering the Chiefs. They just didn't need to throw the ball. Yeah, they were running all day. Yeah. Trakandrick West was uh, going through. He's so, Julie, uh, between Jordan Matthews uh, and Stephen Diggs, next week Matthews has the Buccaneers. Would you rather start Matthews against the Bucs or Stephen Diggs against the Packers? If he's healthy and – Early. Early yeah, prediction. Yeah. Early prediction if he, if he is – Practicing in full, I would go with Jordan Matthews. All right, here's the gaggle of gooses. Ugh. Emmanuel Sanders, zero. Willie Sneed, zero. <sighs> James Jones, zero. John Brown, zero. Those are guys that you didn't want to play. Three targets for John Brown, no catches. James Jones, two targets, no catches. Willie Sneed played the whole game after being limited. One, one target, no catches. And Emmanuel Sanders, uh, he did leave the game briefly to be evaluated for a concussion. He was cleared. He never checked back into the game. Four targets. And he completely goosed. Yeah, that's 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 no good. Uh, one of the things that we see with some of these guys, Emmanuel Sanders, Willie Sneed, both of them didn't practice all week. Same with Alshon Jeffrey, right? He was limited in practice this week. We're getting to the point. So is Peyton. Peyton was limited all week, and they threw him out there. Yeah. So, and I think they said they regretted that. And yeah. They should have sat him. I'm sure the record played into it. But what what you see here is that defenses have enough game tape right now to know what offenses are doing. When a guy is actually limited physically, it makes a difference in decent matchups. So here you've got guys where that's where I'm saying if if Jordan Matthews is limited all week in practice. That's going to affect my decision as to whether I start him next week. It, w it should have with Sanders, with Snead, um, and James Jones, man. He's just looking his age. He's looking kind of what we thought. He had another red zone target, threw the touchdown right into his belly, and he just kind of let it squeak through his legs. Teams are figuring out what to do with Green Bay where they leave Rodgers in the pocket and they man up on these wide receivers and the wide receivers can't get separation and he can't get out of the pocket and make something happen. Yeah. They, so, they could really use Jeff Janis to get better because he's about the only guy that has the – Or make Montgomery to be able to play. Yeah, that, yeah, that would definitely him. help. But I think what they're really missing is that is that, that guy who can fly, that guy who can stretch the yeah. field with Jordy separation. Nelson. Jordy Nelson was one of those oh, guys. Oh, they should get yeah. him back. He's very good. All right, tight ends. Ben Watson disappointed you three for 19, and so did Martellus Bennett three for 18. You know, I, I'm fine starting both going forward. It's what happens at yeah. tight end position. So I would, I would rather have Benjamin Watson over Martellus Bennett. And then it, barely worth speaking of, but Jordan Cameron, uh, Rudolph, and Julius Thomas all stunk too. But hopefully you weren't starting them or streaming them. A uh, couple kickers, bad games from a couple kickers. That's going to happen. McManus, obviously, they they got into field goal range a few times, but they were down so much they were just going for it on fourth down. And Justin Tucker kind of had a bad game. That game flow just went that direction. There were some two-point conversion attempts. 
It's going to happen. Both those guys are starting kickers going forward, and that's all I'm going to talk about. Kickers, 